So let me just introduce myself. My name is Grace. I am academic manager and IELTS teacher at Swoosh English. And oh, excellent. Thank you so much. Sunil has written into the comments that you can hear me. And hello, Sunil. So it's great to be here today. I'm very excited to provide for you today an IELTS listening class. And I'm also going to be giving you lots of information about the Kinetics USA and Swoosh English IELTS scholarship. So if you are a nurse somewhere out there in the world, you've got an American dream to work in the USA, please stay tuned. I will be giving you lots of interesting and exciting information for how you can realize your dream, okay? So pop a message into the comments, let me know where you are in the world. I can see that we've got Melody watching and Safwat from Dubai. Hello Safwat, thank you for joining. And Lita as well. So it's great to have you all here and I hope you're ready for an information packed session today. So let me just start by sharing and I'm just going to check as well that I can share my sound. This, there we go. Okay, good. Um, bear with me, everybody, please. Okay. Ah, here we go. <laughs> so I'm going to be sharing some audio with you today. So I want to check that you are able to hear my audio when it comes to it. Okay. So. As I said, my name is Grace, and today I will be doing for you a listening class. So if you really struggle with your IELTS listening, I am here to help, okay? So pop a message into the chat to let me know, how do you feel about IELTS listening? Is it something that you struggle with, or what particularly do you find difficult about IELTS listening? I am here to help you today. So let's get started. Now, before we begin the class, I want to know a little bit more about the people out there watching the session. So I've got a few questions for you and I would like you to pop your answer to these questions into the chat, into the comments, okay? So the first question I have for you today is, are you a qualified and experienced nurse looking for your dream healthcare job in the USA? If that sounds like you, type me, into the chat box, okay? So if you are a nurse, um, you're anywhere in the world right now, but your dream is to work as a nurse in the USA, type me into the chat box so that I can find out more about you, okay? So I can already see, yep, some people are putting me, so Sunil and Lucy and CJ also, and Lita too, okay, well, this next question is also for you. Are you struggling with your IELTS preparation? Now, the IELTS exam is not easy and many people do struggle and that's okay, but I want to know, are you currently struggling to prepare for the IELTS exam? If that sounds like you, type struggle into the chat box, okay? Okay, I can already see lots and lots of people typing me. So this seems to resonate with a lot of people. So what about IELTS preparation? Are you struggling with that? Okay, I can see, yes, lots of people are saying, yes, we are. Okay, stay tuned. This next question is also for you. Would you like to successfully prepare for and pass your IELTS exam move to the USA and get your dream job for free. So yes, that is right, for free. If that sounds like something you would like to do, type please into the chat box. Okay, I can see, yep, I've got some people writing struggle. I can see Karen has written please. Lots of people are definitely liking the sound of this. So successfully preparing, passing and moving to the USA. Well, let's take a look. If you have answered for all of these questions, this information is for you. So I'm going to introduce to you the free Kinetics USA and Swoosh English IELTS scholarship. So if this sounds like something that might be good for you, listen on. So. Kinetics USA and Swoosh English in partnership with other providers 
are providing for you a completely free IELTS scholarship preparation course to help you achieve that dream of moving to the USA and working as a nurse. So let's take a look in more detail. So here are some things that will be provided for you on the course. So as you can see, you are provided with a complimentary and comprehensive IELTS review course, which is provided by expert IELTS preparation providers. So that includes IELTS classes every week. So lots of different times, lots of different classes available to you. Depending on where you are in the world, we've got all time zones covered. So study groups and study partners. So that's to help you support each other through your IELTS preparation. A Facebook group, which you can use for motivation and also support and talk to other people who are in the same position as you. Uh, uh, we have a Telegram group, okay? It used to be WhatsApp group, but we have migrated to Telegram because there's so many of you. And in that Telegram group, there's lots of support, lots of updates. You can ask questions, a really supportive uh, environment for you. And you will also have the support of a Kinetics IELTS support specialist, as well as the support team at Swoosh English. So everybody will be there to provide answers to your questions or just support if you need it. And then of course, there's the monthly IELTS raffle. So an opportunity to win more prizes every month. So the IELTS scholarship program, what is included in the course? So the course is broken down into eight modules, okay? So nice structured progressive learning as you go through your IELTS preparation. And included in that package is 20 writing corrections. So this is an opportunity for you to practice doing some IELTS task one and task two essays, send them off to a team of expert IELTS teachers at Swoosh English who will grade your writing for you and send you that very valuable feedback. We also have plenty of recorded live classes. So as well as the live classes you can attend, we've got recorded classes so you can watch hours and hours of IELTS classes if you wish. As well as that, we've got some mock exams, some sample essays for you to have a go, practice, speaking partners, as I said, so you can pair up with other people in the same time zone as you to practice your speaking. And of course, around the clock support from Swoosh and Kinetics. So we are here to support you through your IELTS preparation journey. Now, um, it is a long journey, but there's people to support you all the way. So as you can see, the first stage is the NCLEX fast pass. OK, so this is the first stage in your success path. Once that has been cleared, you will then prepare for the interview and then go through the visa framework, okay? So all of the paperwork and admin side of things, but as I said, you have an IELTS support specialist to help you through every step of the journey. You'll then move on to your licensing and credentialing before moving on to the get ready game plan. So this is where you, the final preparations are made so that you are ready and you feel supported to make that exciting move to the USA. We've then got the arrival sequence. So you will be supported on arrival. You'll have the IELTS support specialist there to greet you, and welcome you to your new home. And then the final step is, of course, just to enjoy. Enjoy all of that hard work that you put into your IELTS exam enjoy the benefits of that paying off. Okay, so lots of exciting things. And as I said, all of this is free, okay? So if this sounds like something you're interested in, we have got a link here, which is going into the comments for you now, to sign up for the Swoosh English and Kinetics USA IELTS Scholarship, okay? So I can see all those people who wrote me, <laughs> La Belle in capital letters has put please. <laughs> so this is for you. OK, this sounds like something that will really help you to achieve your dream job of living in the USA and working as a nurse. So there is the link for you. Please do follow that link and sign up today. 
And you can, of course, join me for this class now, and I will be giving you some more information about the scholarship at the end of the class. So please do stick with me. Now, I'm just going to have a look into the chat and see. We've got lots of people expressing their enthusiasm and their excitement for this scholarship. And it really is a very exciting opportunity for all, all the nurses out there around the world. So I'm really happy to be a part of that and to be able to help you. Now, let's move on to today's class. So I said that today is going to be a listening class. OK, so we're focusing today on listening. Now, before we start, I have a question. I would like to know, how do you feel about IELTS listening? OK, uh, you can tell me what you find easy maybe or what you find difficult so how do you feel about IELTS listening as you can see from the lesson names today we're going to focus on part four which many people would consider to be more difficult part so how do you feel about this part of the IELTS listening maybe you have some specific questions please do send them my way so I want to know how you feel <laughs> okay so have a think about that and you can write to me into the chat later and let me know. Hopefully by the end of this class, you're feeling a little bit more confident. So the aims of the lesson today is to look at part four of the listening test. I can see Melody is saying, yes, part four is the difficult part, which brings down our score. Yeah, don't worry, Melody. We will look at some strategies today to help you with that. So I'm going to give you some helpful tips for listening to long audios, because that can be tricky. We'll practice recognizing signposting language in a lecture or talk, which is often the type of audio you have to listen to in part four. And then we're going to try an IELTS listening task together, okay? I need to check that I can get my audio working. <laughs> I'm sure I will, so don't worry. And we will try an IELTS listening task very, very soon. So let's begin then with some tips for listening. So these might sound quite obvious, but you would be surprised how in the moment of the listening test, maybe you're feeling a bit nervous. You might be inclined to maybe panic a little bit and we want to avoid that. So the first tip I have for you is to read the instructions carefully. This is because the instructions might be different for each task. In fact, they will be different. Sometimes you only have to write one word and it's important to be aware of that because if you write more than one word, you won't get the point. Sometimes you'll be told it will be three words or three or less. So you just need to be aware of what you have to write and how many words you have to write and exactly how to complete the task. The second tip use the preparation time wisely. So before the audio begins to play, don't just sit there waiting. You can use that time to your advantage. So you, after you've read the instructions, read the question, read the answer options if there are any. If you're doing a gap fill exercise, read the words around the gap and try to predict the type of word that you're going to listen for. All of this pre-listening can really help you when it comes to listening to the audio. So when you're waiting for the audio to start, make sure you're active, actively using that preparation time, doing some prediction if you can. Tip number three, if you miss an answer, don't panic, okay? It can be tempting to panic, but just move on to the next one. Remember that the answers usually go in the order of the audio. So if you know you've missed an answer, there's nothing you can do at this point, but continue concentrating, focusing on the next question so that you don't miss another answer as well. OK, you can always then go back and put a guess, but it's really important that if you feel you've missed an answer, you don't panic, you stay calm and you go on to the next question. OK, and finally, the final tip is to be aware of distractors. So this is when you hear words and phrases that might be from one of the answer options or they might sound like the answer, but it's just there to distract you.
from the real answer. So my best tip for avoiding distractors is first to know that they exist and be expecting them. And second, don't always write the first answer that you hear. Make sure you've listened to the entire section to know, OK, that answer I heard, it wasn't a distractor. You need to be listening very carefully. Don't just listen out for those keywords and then write them down. You need to make sure you're listening for the meaning in detail. OK, so these are my four top tips for listening and keep them in mind whenever you're doing practice IELTS listening papers or when you're in a class like this. We will have an opportunity to put all of this into practice in the uh, during the class. So the focus of today's class is going to be recognizing signposting language. So I would like everyone now to participate a little bit because it obviously it makes it much more interesting for you as students to participate in the class. OK, so everyone out there watching the first question, what is signposting language? What is that? Maybe you've heard that before in a class. If you have an idea, write your answer into the comments, into the chat. OK, so what is signposting language? Now, if you don't know what signposting language is, you can guess. OK, so you're very welcome to take a guess. What do you think signposting language could be? OK, so I'm going to give you a few moments just to think, what is signposting language? The second question, how can it help us when listening to a lecture or talk? Now, part four of the IELTS exam, you're usually listening to quite a long monologue. So just one person talking. And it's usually someone, for example, giving a university lecture, OK? Or maybe giving a long presentation or talk. OK, so we've got these two questions here for you then. What is signposting language? So I can see lots of people having a go and having a think about this. So signposting language. Well, if you think about what a signpost is, it's something usually on the road that gives directions. OK, so signposting language is exactly that. It's language which gives direction and structure to a talk. It's language that the speaker uses to indicate perhaps a change in topic or to indicate a specific type of information that's coming up, maybe to signal the end of their talk or their beginning of the talk. OK, yes, exactly. So La Belle has put a guide you can think of it like a guide. It's language that guides you through the audio. And it's very common to hear that kind of language in lectures and talks. So yes, Rhoda, you are exactly right. A sign that guides the listeners of what will happen next. That is a perfect answer to that question. Thank you very much. OK, so you can see now this is quite important information to have. If you're going to be listening to a long audio in your IELTS exam, you want to have some knowledge of that signposting language because it really will help you. So how can it help us when listening to a lecture or talk? What does everybody think? How can it help us? We've sort of answered it. So Lucy's saying words and phrases to guide the listeners through. Exactly, Lucy, yes. So it can help us by guiding us through the audio and help us to not get lost. Quite a common problem that I find my IELTS students have with listening is they say, the audios are so long and I get so lost and it's overwhelming and that's completely understanding. So for people like that, if that sounds like you, knowing about signposting language can really help you because it can help keep you focused, keep you on track. And if you do get lost, you can listen out for signposting language to bring you back to the audio, OK? So I'm sure you can see it's very useful to have this information. So we're going to take a look in more detail and hopefully help you to improve your listening skills. So the first group of signposting language I have is for introducing the topic. Now, 
I would like you to read these and then put into the chat either one that you have never used before or one that you would like to use. So have a look at these. Um, and when I say use, I mean listen out for. Maybe you will you can see a phrase on here and you think, oh, I've I've never seen that one before. I'm going to write that down so I can make a note of it for the future. Also, if you can think of another phrase or another type of signposting language to introduce a topic, please do write it into the comments because these aren't all of them. This is not an exhaustive list. There are many, many more, and I would love to have your contributions in this class today. So if you are sitting there thinking, ah, I know a good phrase that introduces the topic that I've heard before, put it, put it into the chat so we can all see. So let's just go through these ones. Today we'll be discussing, today's presentation or lecture or talk will focus on I'll be talking about what I'll be discussing today is the purpose of today's talk is to, and today we will focus on. So can you think of any more phrases or signposting language that you can use to introduce a topic? Okay, if you look at these, you'll see that this is Obviously, it's going to be near the beginning of the talk when the speaker is introducing themselves. And it's good to listen out for the introduction to the topic because it can give you the main idea, the main content of what the speaker is going to talk about, okay? Now, these phrases are not just useful to be aware of for IELTS listening, okay? You might have also been taught that it's good to use signposting language in IELTS speaking. Now, we're not focusing on speaking today, but you can see how some of these could be modified for you to use in perhaps your IELTS part two, for example. Like today, I'll be talking about, or what I'll be talking about is, okay? Um, so let's have a look. I can see that we've got in the chat today we will focus on. Yes, exactly. So I can see, yeah, Ola Vici likes that phrase and is going to try and listen out for it. So excellent, Ola Vici. Okay, so this is our signposting language for introducing the topic. Now, I do recommend if there are any here that you've never seen before, write them down, okay, and see if you hear them in future listening tasks. Now, after the speaker has introduced the topic, they're probably going to start with the first idea. Okay, usually they will talk about a few things and they will start by introducing the first point of their talk or lecture with a phrase like this. Let's start by looking at, to begin, I'll start by talking about, firstly, or the first reason or the first issue is, okay? Now, once again, if you can think of another phrase to start with the first idea, please do share it in the comments, okay? Because it's really great in a class like this that we can all learn from each other. So the advantage to having so many people participating is that we can all share and learn from each other, okay? So please do right into the chat, right into the comments. Another phrase that you can use to start with the first idea. Okay, I can see everyone's having a think a little, a little bit about that. I'm going to move on, but once again, if you've seen anything on this list that you like, please write it down. Okay, next. Once the speaker has talked about the first idea, it's very likely they'll move on to a new point or a new section. Now, this is really useful if you can identify when they're doing that, because it often means that you need to move on to the next question. OK, so you can listen out for key words that are in the question. So, for example, if the next question is asking you about, oh, let's say environmental factors. <laughs> OK, the speaker might say, now, let's turn to talk about the environmental factors. Now, by hearing and spotting that signpost, you know, okay, I need to pay attention more closely now because the next answer is coming, okay? 
So we've got let's move on to, now let's turn to. The next reason or the next issue is, I'd like now to discuss, or the next area I'd like to focus on is. So once again, if you can think of a nice phrase, a nice signposting phrase to introduce a new point or a new section, please write it into the chat. Okay, so this can also be really useful in your everyday life if you are a person who likes to watch maybe TED Talks videos, great practice by the way for IELTS listening. Um, it can help you because in those types of videos where they're making a presentation, giving a presentation, they are going to be using signposting language just like this because often people are covering a few points in a short presentation. So this language is so, so helpful to be aware of. Okay, I can see that we've got into the chat someone has contributed to start with. Yes, you can absolutely use to start with to begin your point. Okay, next, paraphrasing and clarifying. Now, this type of language the speaker will use to clarify a point or to restate a point that they've just made. This type of signposting language is useful because if you perhaps missed the answer or you're looking for more of a clarification on the answer, these types of phrases indicate the speaker is about to restate it or rephrase it in a way. So they might say, what I mean by that is, in other words, to put it simply, let me explain what I mean, or put another way. So if you hear these phrases, you know that the speaker is about to clarify something they've said. This language is very common in lectures and talks where the content might be quite academic and might, they might be talking about quite complex ideas and there's often a need to paraphrase or to clarify a complex idea and put it more simply. So again, not just for IELTS part four listening, but any time that you're listening to perhaps a more academic or complex talk, these are really useful things to be aware of. But once again, these phrases can also be used in your own speaking. If you're in IELTS, well, any of the IELTS speaking tests and you want to clarify something you've said, you could use one of these. So if anyone can think of another way to paraphrase or clarify, please do write your idea into the chat. Really useful signposting language. And finally, the speaker usually will use some kind of signposting language to finish their talk. <clears throat> so they will wrap up the talk somehow. And often, if perhaps you have a final question on your question paper, which is related to how the speaker finishes, how they sum up their talk, the final point they mention, you want to be listening out for this type of language to indicate that that's where they are, okay? So, oops, I'm sorry. So for example, to sum up, uh, let's summarize briefly what we've looked at. In conclusion, to summarize, in summary, and overall. All of these are indicators that the speaker is going to finish the talk. Once again, really useful to be aware of this type of language, okay? Because you know that the final point is coming, okay? So it will often relate to maybe the final question even. So can anyone else think of some language to finish your talk to summarize? If you can think of any type of summarizing language, please do write into the chat. Now, that is all of our signposting language and I really do hope that you found it useful. Uh, please feel free to write me a message into the comments if you have a question about any of the language we've just looked at. Maybe you have a question about pronunciation or correct intonation, or maybe you want to clarify if a phrase you're thinking of is a signposting phrase. I'm very happy to answer all of your questions, okay? So please do write to me into the comments and I will do my best to answer any questions that you have. 
So why is this important? Why have I just shown you all these lists of different signposting phrases? Reason number one, you will be better able to recognize when a particular answer is coming. So just to restate what I was saying earlier, being aware of those signposting phrases and actively listening out for them is going to help you recognize certain answers before they arrive and prepare you to hear the answer. Reason number two, you are less likely to get lost during the audio. So speakers of long monologues like an academic lecture or a presentation or a talk, they help their listeners out by using this very language, okay? They know that they're talking for a very long time. They know that the content might be quite complex or academic. They use signposting language to give structure to their talk. And if, once again, to refer back to IELTS part two speaking, you might have done some practice with your teacher where they're talking to you about how to structure and signpost your own talk in the long term, okay? So again, it's useful for your speaking test as well. It's really important to give structure to what we're saying. And finally, Signposting phrases can help you if you do get lost, okay? So it could happen. It's a long audio. It's at the end of the test. You might be feeling tired. You might be feeling bored or stressed. But if you do get lost, knowing about these signposting phrases and actively listening for them can help you get back on track, okay? So it means that that whole section of the listening test will not be completely lost to you, you can get yourself back on track by listening for these phrases. Now let's have a look at some of the comments that I'm getting through now. Edgar has said to wrap it all up. Edgar, that is an excellent signposting phrase for finishing your lecture or talk or summarizing. So that's great. Deborah has said in summary, the meeting will be adjourned till next month. Okay, so if you're listening to some kind of meeting, you might hear someone use that phrase. It's less likely you'll, that you'll hear it in a presentation or a lecture, but in a meeting, you might hear something like that. So yeah, absolutely. And thank you just to everybody saying hello into the chat. It's great to have everybody here and participating today. So thank you. Now we are going to do some IELTS listening practice, but before we do that, I wanted to remind everybody of the amazing opportunity that we have for you to come and study on a completely free IELTS scholarship with Kinetics USA and Swoosh English. If you missed it the first time, I'm reminding you of that link, okay? You can also find it in the comments, okay? So if you've been watching this class and thinking, I want more of this, I want more, IELTS instruction from an IELTS teacher, this is for you. So that link is going into the chat right now and I encourage everybody to click on it and sign up for more IELTS classes just like this one. So let's move on now to some practice. Now I'm going to play some sections of IELTS part four audio. We're not going to listen to the whole thing um, because we don't really have time for to doing all of that today. We're going to listen to sections, analyze some of the signposting language, and also try to answer the questions that go with it. Now, the, like I mentioned at the beginning of the class, it's important to read the instructions for the task. So we are reading the instructions first, and as you can see in bold, it says, using one word only. So for this exercise, you will see that there are gaps and we are only looking for one word in the gaps. Remember the importance of following these instructions because if you write more than one word, you don't get any points, okay? Also, while you're listening to the audio, I'd like everyone to make a note of any signposting language that you hear. So the speaker will be using some signposting language. We're going to listen to an academic lecture I would really love to see if anyone can pick out the signposting language because it will show to you just how useful it is. Now I'm going to display the slide for the first question. 
And I have my audio here, but I'm going to need everyone to help me by confirming that you can hear the audio, okay? So a little tech check now, everybody. I'm going to play a few seconds. Please do write to me into the chat straight away if you can hear the audio. So here we go. Okay, I cannot hear the audio, so I'm assuming nobody else can as well. So if everyone can just give me one minute, what I would like you to do while I'm sorting out my audio is to just take a maybe a screenshot or a mental image of what you can see on the screen right now and try some prediction, okay? So thinking about the types of words and phrases that should go into that gap, okay? So let's have a look and see. Oh, no, not this one. <laughs> okay, so thinking about that, that I just, the thing that I just showed you. Okay. Sorry to be having some technical difficulties, everybody. What I need to do is share my audio, but on the share screen option, I do not seem to have that. So I'm just trying to figure out right now how I can have that audio shared with you. One option that I might have to have is that perhaps I read the audio for you, <laughs> which is fine. I can do that. So let me let me get that for you. I think that's the best. That's the best fix right now. Here we go. I have the audio script right here. Oh, let me just take a little sip of water so I can prepare. <laughs> Okay, one of the hazards of being a teacher, unfortunately, is that we have to talk a lot sometimes, <laughs> but it's okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share the slide with you once more. So the slide that has the question, here it is. So you can see the question. I am gonna read the audio for you, okay? <laughs> I hope that I don't lose my voice after this class. <laughs> so. I'm going to read the first part. Remember, answer the question with one word and write down signposting language. So here we go. <clears throat> We've been discussing the factors the architect has to consider when designing domestic buildings. I'm going to move on now to consider the design of public buildings. And I'll il illustrate this by referring to the new Taylor Concert Hall that's recently been completed here in the city. So, as with a domestic building, when designing a public building, an architect needs to consider the function of the building. For example, is it to be used primarily for entertainment or education or for administration? The second thing the architect needs to think about is the context of the building. This includes its physical location, obviously, but it also includes the social meaning of the building how it relates to the people it's built for. And finally, for important public buildings, the architect may also be looking for a central symbolic idea on which to base the design, a sort of metaphor for the building and the way in which it is used. <clears throat> okay, that's the first part. Now, hopefully you got the answer to question 31. If you got the answer, pop it into the comments. I can see people already are, and also, any signposting language that you heard me use. I can see, thank you, Edgar, Casey, and Sanika have been putting their answers into the chat. Thank you so much. Now let's take a look. I'm gonna reveal the answer for you. Oh, well done everybody who put social. Excellent, loads of people. Dulce, Rhoda, Sanika, Labelle, Edgar, Irvin. So many people put the correct answer, so well done. And let's take a look because I used quite a lot of signposting language. So yes, I'm going to move on now. For example, we didn't talk about that, but of course, signposting language to give examples is also really, really useful. And then uh, the second thing the architect needs to think about is, so I was introducing my next point. Okay, so lots of signposting language in there. Um, and I really hope that you could see just how useful it was. 
Well done, all the answers coming in, everyone who got that correct, well done. Let's go to the next part. So now you're going to be listening to questions 32 and 33. I will give you a few seconds to read the questions. Maybe use this time to predict the type of words you're listening for. Will it be a noun, a verb, or an adjective, for example? So a few moments while I <clears throat> prepare my voice. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to need a cup of tea after this. <laughs> Okay, right, hopefully everyone's ready, so let's go with the next part of the talk. <clears throat> let's look at the new Taylor Concert Hall in relation to these ideas. The location chosen was a site in a rundown district that has been ignored in previous redevelopment plans. It was occupied by a factory that had been empty for some years. The whole area was some distance from the high-rise office blocks of the central business district and shopping centre, but it was only one kilometre from the ring road. The site itself was bordered to the north by a canal, which had once been used by boats bringing in raw materials when the area was used for manufacturing. Okay, so hopefully you've got question answers 32 and 33, so let me give you a moment to see... Got Edgar's writing some answers in the chat. What about everybody else? Did you get, so we've got on the site of a disused something. So if you predicted correctly, you knew that you were listening for a noun. Beside a something, once again, the article there tells us that we're listening for a noun. Well done, Melody. I can see that you've got the answers right, excellent. Yeah, good. Dorothy has written the correct answer for 32 and so has Jean. Well, loads of people once again. Oh, that's excellent. Well done. So here we go. What about the signposting language? Did you hear any? So yes, if you said factory and canal, you were 100% correct. Some signposting language that I used. Now, if you look at the heading for this section of the question paper, it says location and concept of the concert hall. And then I said, let's look at the new Taylor Concert Hall in relation to these ideas. Now, these ideas that I previously talked about were the location and the concept. So that indicated that I was going to talk about those two things in more detail. So again, signposting language helping us out. Well done, everybody. Faith, Lou, Jenna, Hati, Renessa, Dorothy, everybody, Labelle, who put factory and canal. Nice work, everybody. We're doing well. So let's go on to the final part. Now, in this part, you're listening for three answers, okay? Let's do some prediction together. So question 34, it's approached by a something. What type of word, noun, verb, or adjective? Question 35, the building is in the shape of a something. Again, question, oh, sorry, <laughs> adjective, noun, or verb. And one exterior wall acts as a large something. Again, what type of word needs to go in that gap? So now we've done our pre-listening, we've done our prediction. I'm going to read the final part of this audio. And do excuse me for just taking a sip of water because this last part is a little bit long. Okay, so remember, try to focus. Listen for signposting language if you can. And if you miss an answer, don't panic, go to the next one. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> the architect chosen for the project was Tom Harrison. He found the main design challenge was the location of the site in an area that had no neighboring buildings of any importance. To reflect the fact that the significance of the building in this quite rundown location was as yet unknown, he decided to create a building centered around the idea of a mystery, something whose meaning still has to be discovered. So how was this reflected in the design of the building? Well, Harrison decided to create pedestrian access to the building and to make use of the presence of water on the site. As people approach the entrance, they therefore have to cross over a bridge. He wanted to give people a feeling of suspense as they see the building first from a distance and then close up. 
And the initial impression he wanted to create from the shape of the building as a whole was that of a box. The first sight that people see, the southern wall, is just a high flat wall uninterrupted by any windows. This might sound off-putting, but it supports Harrison's concept of the building, that the person approaching is intrigued and wonders what will be inside. And this flat wall also has another purpose. At nighttime, projectors are switched on and it functions as a huge screen onto which images are projected. Okay, so that's the end of the audio. Let's see. <laughs> Thank you very much um, for your comment on Nesmus. Good stuff, keep it up. Thank you so much. I'm glad you appreciate the class. Okay, let's see. Um, Melody, you have got 35 and 36 correct. Well done. 34 is not quite correct, okay? Look at the word before the gap is a. Okay, so we need a noun in there, but also a noun that can have a before it. Our water, we can't say. So good, I can see, okay, people are getting the answer right for 35 and 36, but no one has said the answer for 34. So that makes me think that was quite difficult. Oh, a few people are saying the answer for 34. Okay, yeah, here we go. Excellent, well done. Let me not keep you in suspense any longer. Here we go. 34 was bridge. Now I can see quite a few people didn't hear 34. So let me just read again that exact sentence. I said, as people approach the entrance, they therefore have to cross over a bridge. So it is approached by a bridge for pedestrians. Okay. So we've got some synonyms here. So instead of saying people, we've got pedestrians. Well done. So many people got those answers correct. That's really great. Um, and the signposting language that I used. So how was this reflected in the design of the building? So almost like a, a question to introduce that I was about to talk about the building design. Now, this was perhaps a little bit easier because I did break up that audio into three parts. Usually you would have to listen to that whole thing plus more. OK, I've only done half of that section, but you can see how if I had been reading that entire part through from beginning to end, signposting language like that would indicate to you that I was about to talk about the building design. And by using the heading on your question paper, you know, OK, now I need to go to question 34 because the speaker is about to talk about the design. So I hope that I've illustrated just how useful signposting language can be. And well done, everybody, for getting those answers correct. That's really great. I'm sorry my audio did not work, but hopefully you didn't mind listening to me a little bit more. So let's finish with a little self-reflection. So I've got some questions for you that I would really like you to answer in the comments. So the first question is, what did you learn about IELTS listening today? What did you enjoy in today's lesson? Hopefully you enjoyed something. And what do you still need to improve? Is there something in the class today that you think oh, I need to improve that particular skill? So I'm going to give everyone a moment just to write into the chat the answers to one or all of these questions. So Olivissi says signposting. You learned about signposting, I'm glad. <laughs> I hope that I have really managed to emphasize the importance of signposting language. So what about everybody else? What have you learned? Maybe just one thing that you learned, one tip. Good, Rhoda says signposting language helps. Yeah, and I'm glad, Melody, that you think it's a good tip. Yeah, good. I really do hope that this helps you in your IELTS listening. Good. OK, so I hope everybody enjoyed that and found it useful. Now, if you have been listening and thinking, well, this is useful. It's nice to have a class with an IELTS teacher. I need more of this. Well, this is for you. So I would like to know from everybody watching out there today, are you a qualified and experienced nurse? And are you looking for a dream healthcare job in the USA? 
If that's you, type me into the chat box. Good that everybody's saying they found the signposting useful and Rhoda says to listen carefully and not rush or panic. Absolutely, Rhoda, you should try not to panic at all costs. <laughs> Good, good. So who is out there and saying, yes, me, I'm a nurse. I want to move to the USA. <laughs> that's me. Yeah, Rhoda, that's you. Great. Lots of people saying, yep, that's me. That sounds just like me. And OK, are you struggling with your IELTS preparation? If you are, type struggle into the chat box. So Hopefully you found this lesson useful, but of course there's so much more to the IELTS than just signposting language. There's lots of things to think about. So are you struggling at all with your IELTS preparation and feeling a bit overwhelmed? Lots of people saying, yes, me. <laughs> okay. And finally then, would you like to successfully prepare for and pass your IELTS move to the USA and get your dream job as a nurse all for free. I cannot emphasize that enough. This is free, a free scholarship that we're offering. If that's you, type please. Oh, Rhoda, I'm so sorry to hear that you're feeling overwhelmed. Hopefully this is just the thing you need. This is just for you. So yeah, lots of people saying, yes, I'm struggling. Yes, please, I want to have a free opportunity to pass my IELTS exam, please, please, yep. Okay, so everybody that said, yes, please, this is for you. So Kinetics USA, in partnership with Swoosh English, are offering an entirely free IELTS scholarship to help you pass your IELTS exam and move to the USA and get your dream job as a nurse, okay? So what's included on this scholarship and how can you apply? So the scholarship includes so many things to help get you where you need to be, starting with a complimentary IELTS review course, which includes video lessons, live classes, teacher feedback, all from the experts. Free IELTS classes every week. So if you enjoyed this class and you found it useful, think how amazing it would be to have an IELTS class every single day, which is what we're offering. We've got all time zones covered, so you can fit it in around your busy life and work schedule, but free IELTS classes on all the skills, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. We have the opportunity to match you up with a study partner so that you can have your own study group and work together with people in the same time zone as you. We've got access to a Facebook group and a Telegram group, which have plenty of support. You can ask questions, you can share any, any questions or any problems that you have. And we have a whole support group there in the Facebook and Telegram group with round the clock support. A Kinetics IELTS support specialist, so someone who has is dedicated to supporting everybody through their IELTS journey. A monthly IELTS raffle for Kinetic Scholars. So if you are enrolled on the scholarship, you have an opportunity every month to win extra IELTS related prizes. Now let's talk about the review course in a bit more detail. So the course is broken down for you into eight milestones or eight modules. So it's helping you um, progress through your IELTS pr preparation in a very structured way. So we at Swoosh English, we are IELTS experts. We've been doing this since 2013. We've helped thousands of students pass their IELTS exam with this very course. OK, so it is designed to help you and support you through your preparation. In that course, you have access to 20 writing corrections. So this is where you can have a go at an IELTS task, send it off to one of our expert IELTS teachers they will mark it for you, give you comments, and then send it back. It's really, really, really valuable feedback to be getting from teachers who have been ex-IELTS examiners and who really know what they're doing. Okay, recorded live classes. So as well as the live classes every week, we have hours and hours of previously recorded classes for you to watch to your heart's content mock exams and sample essays, so you can do plenty of practice in your own time. 
We can set you up with speaking partners, have a speaking buddy to do some IELTS practice. And then of course, around the clock support from us at Swoosh English and from Kinetic. So we are all committed to helping you pass your exam. So we are there to support you every step of the way. So it's great to see people writing into the chat about this very scholarship and saying, yes, that sounds like me, I want to do that. <laughs> now, once you are enrolled on the Kinetics Scholarship, there is a very clear success path mapped out for you with support from the IELTS Support Officer. So as you can see, we're starting here with the NCLEX Fast Pass Blueprint. Okay, so this is where you qualify as a registered nurse. And once you've got all of that sorted, you can move on to preparing for the interview, okay? So the interview and the visa and all of that processing of that very important paperwork, you are supported every step of the way. And you then move on to your licensing and credentialing, okay? So more, more paperwork, more admin, but once again, you're not alone. You're supported all the way through that. Moving on then to the get ready game plan. So this is where you are preparing You've done everything you need to, and you're now preparing for that big move to the USA, to your dream job. And once all of that has been done, you're ready to go, and you've got the arrival sequence. So you are met on arrival, and you're supported in those first few weeks. So getting um, set up, getting your training, your orientation, your housing, it's all, all there for you and planned out. And once all of that is done, all that's left to do is to enjoy and prosper. Okay, so enjoy all of that hard work paying off. And you, you know, you finally passed your IELTS exam, you've gone through this whole success path, and there you are in the USA, ready to go. So if this all sounds like something that you would like, remember, it's all for free. All you have to do is click on the link. So we're popping that into the comments for you right now, you just need to click on the link, and there you will have access to apply and sign up for this completely free Kinetics USA and Swoosh English IELTS scholarship. I really do hope that you have been thinking, yep, yeah, that's just for me. That's exactly what I need. So please do follow the link into the chat. OK, so I just want to finish by saying thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for your patience with my slight technical difficulty. Thank you for listening to my voice for an hour. <laughs> I'm going to have a cup of tea now. Um, and I think everybody else should click on that link, okay? Um, because I really do feel that, well, it's amazing to support nurses just like yourself through their IELTS journey. So I would love to help get you there. So I hope that you found this useful today. I'm signing off for now. Um, and I hope to see you again very, very soon for another Kinetics College class um, with more listening and speaking practice. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Rhoda, Renessa, Olavisi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me and have a lovely day. Okay, goodbye, everybody.